Hello, everyone, and welcome to a Tuesday edition of the Orange and Brown Talk podcast, another Hey Mary Kay edition of the podcast. We had so many good questions from our first uh, podcast on Monday that were left over. We're going to circle back and hit some of those. And we got some additional questions from our Football Insider subscribers that came in after we recorded. So we're going to get to some of those as well. And we're going to start with John from Fort Pierce, Florida, who apparently has been looking at some of the Browns' power rankings and, and where they're ranked. And he says, Hey, Mary Kay. It seems the Browns are ranked in the bottom third of projections for success in 2023 and got poor scores on some of the additions they have made in free agency in the draft. Personally, I've seen some mixed reviews here and there, but yeah, they're, they're somewhere around the middle of the league in a lot of rankings that I've seen. So continuing John's email, I'm also confident they will get little respect in the schedule release. Do you think this is the year the Browns actually surprise people or do they miss the playoffs again? They did sell the farm in the Watson deal. And John is afraid that it is playoffs or bust this year. You know, it's, it's a really good question. It's a really, really good question. And I think when it comes to the power rankings and things like that, I think that uh, the Browns are still paying the price for the acquisition of Deshaun Watson on a national level. I still don't think that people are, are bought in or willing to give them the benefit of the doubt or, uh, view this as a successful endeavor. Uh, so I think that's one thing. And I think it's going to be also interesting to see how the NFL handles it. How did the networks handle it in terms of wanting Deshaun Watson to be in some of those night games, right? I mean, like, what is that going to be all about? Uh, so I think that's going to be a very interesting thing to keep an eye on for when the schedule is released on Thursday. You know, as far as the off season that they had, I think they've actually had a really good off season. Uh, they've completely overhauled their defense and they really overhauled their passing game too. And, you know, that's pretty ambitious, but they were able to do it. Uh, they ended up with four new pass catchers for Deshaun Watson, uh, including Elijah Moore, Marquise Goodwin, uh, Cedric Tillman, Jordan Akins. Then of course they completely transformed the defensive tackle room with uh, Dalvin Tomlinson, Siaki Ika, a bunch of other guys that they've thrown in there. Um, Safety spot. They really upgraded the safety position with Juan Thornhill and Rodney McLeod. So I think they had a really, really nice offseason so far. I think they did the best that they could with the draft, uh, which, of course, started for them in the third round. Again, I think people are in wait-and-see mode. Uh, because of the whole Deshaun Watson thing and what happened last year. I don't think people are ready to buy in yet, and it's going to take a little time for the Browns to go out there and play some really good football before people start to believe again. Yeah, and, and to be fair, I have seen some some good reviews of the Browns offseason as well, both free agency and the draft. So I, I think it's I think it's just mixed, and I think part of it is they didn't have like – you know, they didn't sign like a marquee guy, but they did like directly address some needs that they had to address. And so I think that's a positive. Um, I, I think there's kind of two things at work. I think the first is kind of what you were hinting at. I don't know that people are quite ready to just jump on the Browns and Deshaun Watson bandwagon just yet. No, nobody's real eager to do that. But I think the other part of it, too, and I, I thought of this when I was reading John's question, is um, Peter King did his uh, his power rankings before he takes a little break before camp. And he had the Browns at number 17. So about the middle of the league. And his comment was, I think Deshaun Watson is still good, but how can you tell after seeing him play six highly mediocre games in the last 28 months? And I think that's a fair statement to, to say like, yeah, I think Deshaun Watson can still be that guy, but also we haven't seen it. So I think that's at work a little bit too. I really do. I I think it is. I think that has a lot to do with the wait and see attitude and with uh, with people not ranking them any higher. Uh, But you know what? That's probably not the worst place in the world for the Browns to be right now with people having low expectations for them. I actually think that's better for them than having all of these Super Bowl expectations, all of this Super Bowl talk. Uh, you know, I think we've seen how they've gotten caught up in that over the past couple of seasons, and it has not served them well at all. So uh, so I do think that, you know, people kind of doubting them a little bit uh, probably will be better for them because they can maybe perhaps sneak up on some people this way uh, with expectations lower. 
Maybe there will be less pressure on the players. Maybe they will play a little bit looser. Maybe they'll be a little bit more free. Maybe they're, you know, if they make a mistake, they won't be, you know, freaking out and yelling at each other. So um, I actually think it's better this way for them.